point, I am going to pass over to Maya Geisen Fields and she'll be facilitating the student presentation. So we can't wait to get going everyone. And I hope you all enjoy today's event. Okay, hello everybody. We are so excited to welcome Barings National School fourth class students, Tommy, John, L, and Daniel. Are you guys ready to uh, present? Then we'll give you the word and you have a little bit of time now to share um, what you've been doing so far on your air quality campaign and we're really looking forward to it. So thank you so much. Go ahead and unmute yourselves, step up to your camera and um, your floor is yours. Hello, Schools of Ireland. This is fourth class from Barrett National School. My presentation. I am from Australia, but lived in Ireland my entire life. I'm situated in Ballyshawn and Barrett's. Also about Barrett's is that there's nothing really near you. Like you'd have to drive a bit to get to our house from the school. Barrett's is a place about people and really nice people. A lot of the time you'd see your mates because you and play so many sports. Barings is located in the northwest of Cork City. Barings is made up of many, many hills and valleys. Barings is home to Ballyanley Community Centre, where many different sports are played. Barings is home to a national school and a church called St. Mary's Roman Catholic Church. Barings is a rural township. There are many working farms located in Barings, in the Barings area. There are many dairy, beef and poultry farms, to name a few. There is a main road into Barings, which is subject to heavy, heavier traffic. The smaller roads through bearings are quieter, but are subject to heavier to heavy agricultural machinery at slower speeds. We placed our tubes in two very different locations. The first location was the busy car park across the road from our school, which is next to the church and to a childcare centre. Number two is the outdoor classroom that is very quieted and it's surrounded by buildings. Our school starts at 8.50 every morning in Barings National School. Traffic is busy from 8.40 onwards with parents dropping their kids to school at this time. It is also busy at 1.30 when junior and senior infants finish. The rest of the school finishes at 2.30. At 2.30 is the most congested time of day for traffic. There is St. Mary's Church across the road from our school. It is very busy at mass times. Inniscar Parish Mission has been on for the past two weeks and the church has been very busy because of it. This autumn has been very mild and extremely wet. We had Storm Agnes two weeks ago with an orange weather warning issued. Hopefully the rest of October improves. We predict the car park will have higher recordings of greenhouse gases than the garden, mainly because with the cars and vehicles dropping and collecting children from school. We also use the same car park for mass. We think the outdoor classroom will have much lower readings due to the fact it is much less greenhouse gases and overall less machinery. We would like to see less traffic on the roads around the school. We think that if people started carpooling to school and walking if possible, it would reduce the amount of greenhouse gases on the road. We would like less paper waste and not to be dumping our copy books at the end of the year if they had pages left in them. We would also like to use less tinfoil, cling film and plastic in our lunch boxes. Thank you for listening.
Thank you so much. Um, well done, uh, Tommy, John, Ellen, Daniel. It's really informative. I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to our panel, who are going to give you guys some suggestions, some feedback, and some ideas on their your on your air quality um, project. So I'll start with Peter. Do you have any anything you'd like to share? Peter from NASA is going to give us a little bit of feedback. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. First off, great presentation. I love the fact how everyone took part um, in the presentation. So that's awesome to see. Um, uh, one question would be: How long do you plan on to on continuing making your measurements. Um, I want to see if there's any differences in the seasons, uh, you know, when you're making your measurements, whether there's more car activity, um, also perhaps to see what it's like maybe during the daytime and making, maybe leaving the measurements out at nighttime to see if there's any difference between nighttime and daytime. That would be interesting as well. Oh, we're planning on doing that in November. Until November. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, is there any other feedback or comments or questions from our panel um, today? We have time for one more. And just a quick comment. I thought it was really nice how uh, you explained uh, all about bearings, um, just providing context for uh, what it is like to live in bearings and how much traffic there is and what the landscape looks like. Uh, you really brought us there. So uh, that context is really important to your scientific study. So thanks so much for explaining that. Thank you so much and really well done to the students of Barrington National School. We appreciate it. It's not easy to be presenting to a bunch of different people. So for all our presenters today, um, we're just delighted that you're feeling brave enough to share what you're doing because it's really helpful for all of us uh, to learn from your experiments and your observations. So thank you, Barrington. We're going to go ahead and welcome our next school, which is going to be um, St. Coleman's National School from Cloyne. So can St. Coleman's National School get ready? We have Fionn, Sarah, and Keen with us today. You guys can go ahead and unmute yourselves and step up to your screen. And I think my colleagues will be spotlighting you in a moment. Globe Ireland Air Quality by 6th Class St. Coleman's National School presented by Fionn, Sarah, and Cohen. Dear Eve, August 12th to old. Our names are Sarah, Fionn, and Cohen. We are six class students in St. Coleman's National School in Cloyne. Today we'll be talking to you about our air quality project in Cloyne. We hope you enjoy our presentation. Cloyne. Cloyne is a large rural village located in East Cork. It is about a 30 minute drive from Cork City. It is famous for its hurling history and medieval round tower. Christy Ring was born in Cloyne and there is a statue of him at the old pitch. Our round tower is over a thousand years old. It is just over 30 metres high and it is not accessible to the public. Our school. Our school is a co-educational primary school with about 320 pupils. We have a diverse school community. We have a student council. We are a green school, an active school and a creative school. Last year, we celebrated the school's 50th anniversary. There is a huge interest in sports among our pupils and we won the Skeena Skull Hurling final last year. This is our first, part, this is our first year part, participating in this Globe Ireland Air Quality project. We are very interested to learn the results. Students. We created a map of our school and surrounding areas. There is a local road to the front of the school, estates on the other side and fields at the back. We decided as a class to place one tube by the road and one by the car park at the back of the school. Weather. The weather over the past two weeks has been varied. Our first data collection was during Storm Agnes, but we've also had warm, cloudless days. Our wind mostly comes from a southern direction. Our school is north of the road, so this may cause an issue for our air quality due to car emissions being blown towards the school. Traffic. The only road near our school is at the front. It is a local road that goes to a crossroad and runs through the village. However, we feel that it is mostly local traffic and is typically and it typically isn't used as a route for heavy goods vehicles. When we took the traffic surveys in the mid-morning, we counted between 5 to 17 cars. When we did the count at drop-off time, we counted 48 cars. This tells us that the road is mostly used for community, for school community and people going to work. 
Predictions. We predict that the air quality in Cloyne will fall in the lower end of the good range of air quality. It shouldn't be too bad as it's not that big or busy, but it can't be perfect as a lot of people drive past on the way to places like Ballymaloo, Co- Middleton and Co. We think that the air quality at the back of the school, which is surrounded by fields, will be of better quality than the roadside. Changes. We have spoken about this as a class. In the mornings, all the classes line up at the front of the school, which is the roadside. If the air quality is below fair, we are going to ask the principal to rearrange the lines to the back of the school, away from the road and closer to the fields. We are also going to try to encourage people to scoot, cycle or walk to school. We could organise a walking bus to reduce the traffic outside the school. We will share the results with our local councillors and TDs. Thanks for listening to our air quality project and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Well done. Um, Great presentation. So let's hear from our um, panel. So I'm going to throw it over to Leo McKittrick from the EPA first. Leo, do you have anything to say to our um, presenters here from Flint Coins National School? Super presentation, folks. Really good. Really enjoyed the presentation. Uh, just three quick points. Um, it sounds like you're going to continue with your studies, uh, which is great to hear. So the first point is, if you want more information, uh, a resource to go to that the EPA provides, it's airquality.ie website, and you'll be able to see monitoring stations that will give you real-time values of air quality near you. So for yourselves and all the other uh, students on the call today, airquality.ie to get more information. The other thing is, listen to your presentation. So another project that I'm heavily involved in is Clean Air Together. And the Clean Air Together project was actually down in Cork City last year. And one of the things we found with slightly higher results of NO2 is yes, on busy roads, but particularly intersections. So I was really interested to hear you talking about the crossroad. So you might find some um, interesting findings at the crossroad there, maybe higher or than you probably anticipated. So that's one to, thing to keep an eye out for all the students on the call about busy roads, but also about intersections where roads meet. And thirdly and last is behavior change. It was great to hear you talk about what what is going to change or what is going to look to change. So looking at active travel and other measures put in place, but also linking in, linking in with your local uh, representatives, TDs and counsellors. That's great. But you can drive this change yourselves within the school and your own school community, but it branch out to others and highlight these measures that you think that should be implemented across your school community and wider field in your own community. But a uh, great presentation. Thanks, folks. Thanks so much, Leo. That's great feedback. Um, anybody else from our panel want to um, share some feedback with our presenters here? Or is yours for another moment? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I thought it was an excellent presentation. I um, really liked the way you made observations, uh, for example, of the traffic. And then you drew some conclusions about that, noting that it's uh, school related traffic. Really impressive. Uh, really liked the way you made predictions. So you installed two tubes and you already thought which ones, which one would have higher uh, readings. And then um, I thought it was really nice that as a class, you already talked about the project and potential actions that you're interested in. So yeah, keep on the good work. You're on the right trajectory. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sabrina. We're going to go ahead and say thank you so much to Cloy National School um, sixth class. Well done. And let's go ahead and welcome our presenters from St. Bridget's National School. We have Joe, Finan, Maya and Ava with us today. So the floor is yours and you can go ahead and start when you are ready. Closest times to us are Kingsport, Cartel Cross. They're about four to six kilometres away from our school. The school is built on top of a hill about one kilometre from the main Kingsport and Country Road. It is a quiet, light trafficked area. We placed tube one in where all the cars park up and the bus. Tubes two 
is in a sheltered area at the back of the skin where there is no traffic. Tube one is where nearly everyone is parking when they are dropping the kids off and the bus pulls up. We went out twice a week and looked at the clouds and said what type of clouds there was. We also went to Met Air and asked how much rainfall there was and what went, how, what was the wind speed. We could we would like to see less cars parking parking more parking storage. Expression good air quality. Our expression our expectations are good air quality and not a residential area, school bed on the hill, not a lake road to factories or towns. Thank you. What we would like to see, car parks free of cars, less fuel, more lives, park and stride. Thank you so much. Fantastic work. And you have this fantastic final slide. Would you like to share um, why you chose this great image and this great slogan? It's from Star Trek. Absolutely. So thank you guys so much for your presentation. Um, let's go ahead and hear from our panel. Maybe we'll start with Peter um, from uh, the NASA uh, Communications Department. Peter, go ahead and uh, take us off. Hi, guys. Uh, once again, awesome presentation. Um, I love seeing the images of Ireland. It's so pretty. Um, I noticed you didn't have a drone. Um, I'm wondering, perhaps, if there's a way to put the sensor on a drone that you can fly up and get the the um, air quality in the different atmospheric columns, if that would be a possibility, um, because you can see how it is the higher up you go to see if there's any changes. And that's something that would be pretty unique uh, because you have that access to a drone. Uh, not sure if it's possible, but that would be pretty curious uh, to add to your um, research there. The great idea. What do you guys think of that? Be interesting. Very nice, great, great idea. Um, any other feedback from our panel? Any other ideas or suggestions? Yeah, I really liked your maps. I think they're uh, really informative. It was a really good idea to, to uh, kind of highlight potential uh, areas that would affect air quality. Um, and then I was just thinking in terms of, yeah, I, I really like the positive message as well. We can do this. It's uh, You want to bring about change. Uh, it's great. The idea of a car park free of cars and park and stride is really beautiful too. Um, and I was wondering maybe for the next step in your project to think about how can this happen? Um, you know, what, what can you do or how can you incentivize, uh, incentivize others to do that and uh, and maybe just a suggestion to measure things before you you make any communication or you take any action and then after just to see if your message or your action had an impact on others uh, but overall well done it was really excellent and love your uh, white coats and spa space rocks <laughs> really nice background thank you thank you you're welcome thank you thanks thanks sabrina that was really good um great feedback and some good good things for everybody in the call to take with us right when we're thinking about the next steps of our campaign and maybe sometimes we have these actions we, we want to do but it's a good idea to have that information first to know you know where is the traffic coming from why do we see the type of traffic that we see around our school and then once you've collected your information think about how you can target your actions to those specific challenges um, I think that's really good advice. So we're going to go ahead and say thank you so much to our fantastic presenters at um, St. Bridget's National School and welcome presenters from St. Oliver Plunkett's National School. We have fifth class, Emily, Fergus, Ava, David, Georgia, and Sophie with us this morning. So the floor is yours. Go ahead and get us started. We're from fifth class in St. Oliver Plunkett's National School in Malahai County, Dublin, and we're in Dublin. And this is our clean air project. Uh, uh, we have our school, our car park, which goes down further with the teacher and staff park. We have a, a beach and a marina. We have a railway track and a dart station where there are diesel and electric powered cars. 
and we have Nash Street, which is a European Special Protected Protection Area. Uh, and we're 10 minutes away from the airport, so we have a lot of planes over there. Um, on the 27th of September, we put, we put tubes around our school, and the first one we put at, down at the front gate of our school, at the bottom of the car park, and we feel this is the best place for getting the most pollution, because between 10 past 8 and half past 8, cars drive past uh, our school, so it's the best for um, uh, getting as much pollution as possible. And and the second one we put up, uh, it's actually in the wrong place. The red mark, it should be in the top left. And we feel that was the best spot for the least pollution because it was farthest away from the uh, car park and all where the cars are. And there's a lot of wind and it's quite high up. This is the this is a picture of us putting up the first tube at the back of the school where we think it's the least polluted area. It's very high up, so it's quite windy. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the one at the front gate, and we're on the inside of the gate. The cars go on the other side, and the the teacher's cars come up the car park, which is very much standing. Next slide, please. All right, you can open up that if you can open up the um that's yeah. So we can go back to the slide then. So you're gonna talk about school streets, uh, Sophie. Can you go see on. that there? No, we'll go on anyway. She knows what she's talking about. So but... great, great, go ahead. Uh, our school, um, uh, we started doing school streets in late 2019. And school streets means that um, the road in front of our school is closed between half eight and a quarter past nine. And then it reopens. And in the afternoon, it is closed from one o'clock until um, a quarter to three. Um, um, we've noticed that lots of more students uh, cycle, take their bike or walk to school. And um, because the road was closed, parents were banned from dropping their kids uh, at the front of the at, the, at the gate. And they're given a sticker so that they're allowed to park and pay and display for free for up to two hours. And it has to be in a 15, 10 to 15 minute walk away from the school. Um, and we've noticed that um, there's been 20% less pollution because of the um, because of the road being closed. Next slide, please. Why we wanted to measure air pollution around our school. During COVID, there was less cars, which is better for the school. Um, and Malahide uh, because there is less pollution and um, our school streets um, helps um, stop some of the air pollution but there is still air pollution coming what more can we do and our school street solution works for our school but maybe it pushes the problem down the road we want cleaner air for all of my next slide please on Thursday the 5th and Friday the 6th, the weather on both days were overcast and the sky was milky and very, very pale blue. The temperature was 14 degrees on Thursday and 19 degrees on Friday. The wind speed from southwest, 3 knots and 6, six kilometers per hour. Thursday, on Thursday and 8 knots, 15 kilometers per hour on Friday. The direction is going southwest. We're going to be on this again this Thursday and Friday.
next slide, please. Um, so we did a traffic survey um, uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning until half 8. And um, on Thursday, there was 22 cars past the road. And on Friday, there was 29 cars that had passed the road. Um, the greatest amount of traffic was between 8.15 and 8.20. Birthdays, and this the street was open. Next slide, please. Georgia. The unit population of no. projection maybe twenty to over twenty to thirty. Was <laughs> so our meet our projection for our pollution projection is is um that. There are a medium amount of cars passing by, and um, that there are 20. So on Thursday, there was 22 passing and six idling, and on Friday, there was only nine passing and I think nine idling, and there was medium pollution. We all want to see less cars in the village for walking buses. We already have walk on Wednesdays, cyclists, cyclists. My teachers leaving their cars at home. Less traffic on the way to school means healthier air for anyone who is walking, cycling, etc. Better awareness of the fact that air pollution causes around 1,400 deaths in Ireland each year and lots of lung issues. Malachi Estuary is a European special protection area because all of the wild water birds and the sea grass would like to keep it. Like to keep it safe and polite. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Wow, that was a fantastic presentation, and it's delightful to see so much work having gone into this already. I'd like to invite Sabrina from Globe Ireland on our panel to give you guys some feedback first. Thank you so much. It was great to see uh, the teamwork again uh, with several students presenting. Well done. It's not easy, uh, but you've done it. You can be proud. Um, Really lovely presentation. Um, I was particularly interested in your school street, of course, because it's pretty unique. And I think you have an opportunity there to uh, both study. So you were curious to know, for example, whether that school street, is it um, kind of solving the issue or is it pushing traffic somewhere else? So maybe that's something you could look at uh, finding out. And the other thing I wanted to say is that um, it'd be great if you could knowledge share with other other schools in Ireland to explain and uh, what your school street is about and uh, how it works. And maybe it will help others try and lobby for a school street. You're 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 in a very good place there. So um, I think if I were you, I, I would uh, I would look in, in that direction. You have a great asset there. Well done again. Thank you so much, Sabrina. That's great ideas. Anybody else from our panel like to share some feedback or thoughts or questions? Uh, this is Peter. I will. Um, as Sabrina mentioned, wonderful presentation. Um, it was really great. It's great to see you guys not only presenting, but but also understanding and being activists as well. Um, my question is, uh, if you're if you are considering taking measurements uh, to see when that train uh, that you mentioned is coming as well, uh, to see if that has anything to do um, with the uh, air quality as well, making measurements when you know the train will be coming or going, uh, because you did mention there's a train track nearby. Uh, so something to, to keep in mind. Yeah, I think we will. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Bye. That's a really good idea. Thank you so much, Peter. I see also Leo McKittrick has his hand raised. Would you like to provide some feedback, Leo? Hi, everybody in Malahide. Uh, this comes from, from a swordsman, uh, as you probably hear from my accent. So I'm well aware of uh, all the great things that you're doing in Malahide and also uh, within your community and your school. Just two quick points, because I'm mindful of time. Um, us here in the EPA, yeah, one of our big jobs is to protect the environment, but we also realize we can't do it all ourselves, okay? So key to our work is working in partnership with others, okay? And that's great to hear 
with Jews, working in partnership with others. And I know that some of the projects and some of the actions that you mentioned in your presentation, like uh, the street um, project, working closely with Fingal County Council. So you've got a great partner there that you can link in with all the time, Fingal County Council and their environment section if you want to do work into the future. And my second point is on that point, exactly as Sabrina has done. So you mentioned a lot of work that's been done by yourselves, by the school and the community, but what next? So that's the question I'd ask, what next? Next, Not to answer it here, but to think about it, as Sabrina says, and to look at where you can monitor or where you can do research next to highlight issues that might be happening elsewhere in the community and raise it within your school, your school community, and Fingal County Council and others, and to address it. But great work. Good to hear uh, advice from Malahide. Okay. Thank you very much, Leo. So that's another um, piece of really good feedback for uh, St. Oliver Plunkett's and Malahide. And I think there's some good ideas there as well to take on with you. So thank you very, very much. Fantastic presenters again. And I just want to give a big kind of virtual round of applause for all of our um, primary school presenters. You've done a fantastic job. Um, we are now moving on to our secondary school presenters. So we're very, very excited to have Nagel Community College Green Schools Committee Group, Jawad, Sophie, and Searsha here with us. So you guys can go ahead and take the floor whenever you're ready, and I'm going to move the slides over to your presentation. Thanks again to our presenters from St. Oliver Plunkett National School. Hello everyone, my name is Jawad. I'm a fifth year student here at Nagel Community College in Cork and I'm the chairperson of the Green Schools Committee. Next to, me, I have, next to me, I have Sophie who's in third year and represents the Young Social Innovators group in our school. And here on my left, I have Saoirse who is in first year and, and is also a member of the Green Schools Committee here in our school. We are also joined by all members of the Green Schools Committee and the Young Social Innovators group. I'm gonna pass you over to Sophie, we'll get us started. Thanks, Hello, great to meet you all. Very close to Sorry, Sophie, we can't hear you so well. You might need to just move a little bit closer to the microphone. So sorry, go ahead. I'm Sophie, and as Jared mentioned, I'm a member of the YSA class. We have joined the Green Schools Committee to help with this project. Firstly, let me tell you a bit about our school. Nagel Community College is a school of approximately 270 students in the suburbs of the city. The school is situated 15 minutes from the city centre and there are two main bus routes that pass by our school daily, the 215 and the 202. The 202 bus services is one of the best service routes in the country with a bus running every seven minutes. We have placed our tubes at the school gate, location A, which we all walk through each day. It is the only access point for drop off and the school car park for both our school staff and the primary school beside us. The second tube is at the back of the school, near on a gate near our basketball court and greenhouse, but it is also next to the main road, which the bus stop is on. Approximately 80% of our school community walk or use public transport to come to school. Our main reason for joining this project was that the Green Schools Committee and YSI wanted to increase awareness of the environment amongst the staff and students. Mahan was previously identified as an environmental litter black spot in 2022 and is our mission to have a cleaner community in terms of both litter and our air. This project has really made everyone interested and allowed more to be involved. Thank you, Sophie. So far, we have carried out traffic surveys and we are monitoring our weather on the days we do this. We have just started our cloud observations and are excited to learn more about this as we continue. We don't expect to have too many, too many days as sunny as this picture taken in September, but here's hoping. Here on this slide, we have a few interesting fun facts about clouds, which I hope to be true. I'll pass you over to Saoirse now, who will share our findings so far. Thank you, Joanna. As you can see from our slide, we have completed four weather observations so far. We, to date, we have an average temperature of 15 degrees. 
Wind speeds have ranged between 25 and 32 kilometers per hour. Our weather has been very mixed and very, we have with, with very intense rainfall on the 26th of September and 4th of October. In terms of traffic, we have found that point B, the basketball court, has higher traffic than point A at the school gate. This was expected, but we were surprised to see there was only a small difference. We thought the road at the main gate would be much quieter. Our predictions for our air quality is that we expect tube A location, the main school gate, to be the most polluted area despite the other tube being along the main road. This is because most of our school traffic must pass where tube A is. If our findings are correct, we might be able to consider alternative entrance points for students or to ask parents to avoid coming into the school grounds for drop off to reduce pollution of the air. Going forward, we'll be carrying out cloud studies and we will continue to monitor traffic and weather. We, we also hope to link with Black Rock Observatory in Cork to see if they can help with our research. We are really excited to see our results come together. Thank you so much. That was a fantastic professional um, presentation. So great work. Uh, I see Leo has a hand up from the EPA. So we're going to let Leo take the word first. Thanks. Great presentation, folks. Can I just ask a quick question, just to make sure I'm correct. So your school is within Cork City Council? You're yeah. Very, yeah. OK, that's great. That's great. Um, as I said earlier, OK, we've done another citizen science project. Um, last year called Clean Air Together down in Cork City. So we got to know a lot of extra things about air quality down in Cork. So um, I'm really excited to like look and, and hear your presentation about work that you are doing and, and the fact that you have students on the committee from different years that obviously you're looking at doing the work year after year. So in Cork City Council, they actually, a year or two ago, they were one of the first uh, local authorities to uh, issue their air quality strategy. So Cork City Council are doing loads of work with air pollution. So you might be, look at teaming up with them and be involved in some of their projects going forward if you're looking for ideas of projects or to be involved in the bigger picture of air pollution in Cork City. And also they do research. Um, you said about Black Rock Observatory, you, you're looking to do work with in the future. Yeah, well, also with, in partnership with Cork City Council, they do research with UCC, University down in Cork. So there's a lot of areas where you can team up, work in partnership with others in this area. Okay. And great Thanks, work. Leo. Keep it keep it going, folks. That's great comments and feedback. We have time for one more short um question or piece of feedback from another one of our panel members. This is Peter. Um, I can say a few words. Um, I love the fact that Leo mentioned that there's other work that has been done. Um, I would be curious to know uh, if you're interested in going back um, and seeing historic data to see how things have changed in the past uh, compared to the way things are now. Um, and maybe um, speak with your parents and, and other folks that lived in the community to see how things have been in their life and compare that to the way things are now um, to see if the quality has changed or temperature or, or whatnot. That's a really good piece of feedback. Do you guys have uh, want to answer or comment on that? I can say so. <laughs> Maya, can I just come in with an extra thing, guys? Yeah, so ahead. if you, if you, if you're researching, looking at projects to do into the future, so on the EPA YouTube, there's a recording of the public meeting from Clean Air Together that was down in City Hall in Cork. I encourage your your committee to have a look at that. And you can see what projects are in the pipeline to happen in your city over the coming years. And you can get to see people that are involved in this and that maybe you can link it up with them into the future. So clean air together, public mm -hmm. meeting on the EPA YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much, Leo. That's a great piece of advice. And um, thank you to our presenters. Um, we are gonna move forward to another school in Cork, but we're going to West Cork to a fantastic um, 
group of a pair of LCA one students who are going to share uh, about their process so far. So they're coming from Mount St. Michael's in West Cork, and I'll allow you guys to introduce yourselves. So go ahead and take the word when you're ready. I think we just need you to unmute yourselves there before you start. You're still, there we go, we hear you, loud and clear, perfect, go ahead. Hello. Hello, Hello. Hello. Um, we're from Mount St. Michael, West Cork, um, my name is Sophie and this is Chelsea. Um, I'm going to speak to you about our location. We are located in the southwest coast of County Cork just down the bottom of the map. Our school is by the sea, surrounded by trees and uh, farm land. Procedure we are following. We placed one air quality tube on the main road where the students are dropped in the morning and collected in the evening. We placed the other tube in a wooded area at the back of our school we take turns to check that the tubes are unmoved each day. We have a weather cabinet with instruments to measure temperature, pressure and humidity. We also have a rain gauge to measure rainfall each day. James and I put the tubes up. We put it in a, a wooded area and one on a road sign where most traffic pass. We use this cloud observation chart to record the cloud cover. We plan to do a traffic survey. We will do this at quarter to nine until five past nine when primary school and secondary school starts, 20 past two until 20 to three when primary school finishes and 10 past three until half past three when secondary school finishes. Uh, results and actions. We expect that, that the air will, on the main road will be more polluted than the air on the in the wooded area. To Im improve our air quality, we intend to ask drivers to switch off their engines while waiting. We also think it would be better if the drop of off point was moved 200 meters away from the school. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you guys Thank so you. much. Fantastic work, Sophie and Chelsea. Great presentation. And um, I just think it's fantastic to see all these different locations. So for everybody listening who are just listening to the presentations today, this is a really good thing to think about when you're going to map and look at what where you are and how your geography influences their results. So really good um, job on really highlighting your proximity to the sea there, girls. Do we have any um, thoughts or comments from our panel? I might start with uh, uh, Sabrina. We have a problem with our speaker. We can't hear you. So. Okay. Oh, dear. That's no good. Then you won't be able to hear our panel. <laughs> we'll give you a moment to see if you can get it sorted. Um, and in the meantime, maybe our panel might have something to just comment on that will be useful for the other listeners as well. So maybe I'll start with with Sabrina Moore from the Globe Ireland team. Uh, sure, and I, I guess they'll be able to catch up on the recording as well. Um, so I suppose, um, yeah, it was a really nice, I thought, thorough study, including weather and traffic. Um, I was just wondering regarding the traffic, if it would be worth looking at the traffic before school starts, so uh, just a little earlier, possibly, um, just to see the drop-offs in the morning. And then I was also curious about what mode of transportation the students are using, and uh, what are the main modes of transportation, um, and you know whether that could be influenced. Uh, finally, on your idea of moving uh, the drop-off to 200 meters, I think that's a great idea. I could create a bit of a more, you know, of an active travel kind of feeling 
if at all possible, maybe to move it um, away from even a greater distance um, uh, and and enjoy your beautiful school grounds, you know, um, if it was possible to move it even further and have a kind of a mindful walk to school in the morning, that could be awesome and create some new habits. So yeah, just some minor remarks, but overall uh, really interesting. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Sabrina. That's a great feedback. And um, in just interest of time, we're going to have to move on to our next presenters to stay on track. But thank you guys so much from uh, Mount St. Michael's. We'll make sure that we'll share these comments and thoughts with you and your teacher so you'll be able to see them uh, once we once we get the recording ready. So next up, we have some um, fantastic presenters from St. Bridget's College. We have a TY group and some third year students here, and there's a good group of you. So I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves and tell us what your names are before you start. So welcome, and the floor is yours. Hi, my name is Sharvi, and I'm from St. Bridget's College, Lafrey, and this is our GLOW project so far. So a little bit about our school. Our school is located in Locre, which is in the west of Ireland, and will be considered a large rural town. Our school's population is 630 people and growing. Our school is state-run, multi-denominational, and co-ed. According to our recent survey, the most popular form of transport is car and bus, as most people live out in the countryside. Hi, I'm Ellen. We place the probes in two different areas around our school, so that we could make a comparative analysis on the NO and NO2 produced by traffic in those areas. Probe X, as you can see here, is located beside the road. We chose this area because this is where the traffic tends to congest during drop-offs and pickups. We place probe Y in the car park, as although there are cars here, it does not congest at the same level as the road. These cars are stationing throughout the day. In the past few days, the weather has been overcast and we could feel that the quality of the air was poor. But now, when the weather is clearer, we can feel that the quality is much better. We really feel like we are living the project and the data and the project has really started to come alive for us. Hi, I'm Danny. Breathing nitrous oxide can cause dizziness, unconsciousness and even death. Long-term exposure can lead to infertility and brain damage. Gasoline and diesel engines emit oxides of nitrogen, such as NO and NO2. On doing this project and research, we have come to realise the long-term health risks and implications to our health. As a school body, we want to eliminate this pollutant. Our aims of this project. On a school level, we want to present to our board of management to change our school policy that students should not wait at the car park, or should wait at the car park, which is point Y, and not at the road, which is point X. On a political level, we want to present to our local county council with scientific data to mandate that all bus engines should be turned off during drop-offs and pickups for public transport. We hope on being selected next year for this project to offer a comparative analysis from the changes made within our school and we hope the long-term health of our students is improved. When I changes to we, illness becomes wellness. That is our school's motto on sustainability. We hope to collab with other schools so we can collectively bring about more awareness because together we can make a change. A fantastic presentation. Yeah. Great work. Um, I love the school slogan. This is such an important connection from our environment, what we do every day to how we feel and that how we feel is more than just our health, but it's also our well-being. So that's a really, really good link there. Thank you. So our panelists, do we have any thoughts, suggestions, feedback, questions for these great presenters? I'll start um, by sending this one over to uh, perhaps Peter Falcon. You want to take the word first. Yeah, actually, you said exactly what I was thinking. That is such a wonderful model. Uh, I really like it. Uh, never heard it before, but it's a great one. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, when you get the, the data in, I'm curious to see what what's going to happen. I love the fact that you guys are going from, you know, just making measurements, but actually being active in your community. That's great to see. That's the next step. Um, so hopefully those students get to get turned off. Um, I'm also wondering, uh, much like other projects, um, 
the seasonal um, differences uh, throughout the months to see how things change uh, when the weather changes to see what impact that may have on your study. So I would encourage you to, to continue making your measurements, but just do, do it, um, continue with it so, so, we can, so we can see what the, the variations are in the seasons. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Peter. Um, so great, great ideas there. Anybody else from our panelists, perhaps Sabrina or Leah, would you like to jump in on this? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, it was really interesting to hear from you that you 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 know you're noticing the air pollutant more. Um, and I guess that often happens when we start being curious about something, then we see it <laughs> more. So you're you're starting now to smell a difference when the weather is different and maybe the number of cars you can smell the difference. Um, it is true. It is a smelly <laughs> gas. Um Maybe, uh, yeah, wonderful presentation, well done, so clear. Um, I had just one suggestion for uh, the idling uh, coaches. Uh, maybe you could um, short term as well, try and talk to the drivers and explain what you've just explained to us, that, uh, that air pollutant has an impact on our health and on young people's health and on their health as well. And turning up their engine is so easy. So maybe maybe try and have a go, be nice, and uh, you could maybe you could give them a badge of honor every time a sticker, <laughs> every time they do we it. <laughs> wanted to have the scientific data first in order to actually convince them. So okay, that's why we're doing this project. Okay, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Just go on as planned, but. Uh, uh, yeah, sometimes talking to people can can help to you know, and uh, but talking to your Council and local representatives make sense too. Thank you so much, Sabrina. Those are great feedback words. Um, yeah, we had a school last year, I'll just mention this, who who did a survey of all the student population and teachers and asked them why they drove and um, what kind of vehicles they had. And it was quite an interesting qualitative observation to add to this quantitative observation of the air pollutants to see if you can use that data as well to convince people to change their habits. But it's really good uh, ideas. And Leo, I see your hand is up, so I'll give you the word briefly as well. Thanks, Maya. Just three quick points. First, uh, excellent presentation. Uh, love the slogan at the end and very polished presentation. So thanks very much. Second point is, yeah, about uh, idling of cars or vehicles. And I put it in the group chat with the previous presentation. Again, you know, for all the students here in the schools to think about working in partnership with others. So over the years, when we've seen through the GLOW program with schools, with no idling campaign, they've linked in with other community groups. For example, your local tidy towns uh, group to get the word out and get action out across your community. So working with others, take that into consideration as you go forward with your studies. And the last thing, I feel like now and again, I'm, I'm kind of plugging extra uh, on Tashka EPA work, but close to you soon. I know you're in County Galway, uh, but soon um, EPA in partnership with Antashka, we're running our citizen science project, Clean Results, what they're in Galway City, and that'll be happening in February next year. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks so much, Leo. And thank you um, yeah, to thank the you fantastic so presenters from St. Bridget's Community College. So it is time for us to move all the way across the sea to the Netherlands where um, we have a group from Calvin College, and they are also measuring nitrogen dioxide using the exact same method as all the Irish schools are um, at the exact same time. So I am gonna let you guys introduce yourselves and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I don't know if you want to share your screen or if you just want to talk, but uh, either way, the floor is yours um, and I'll let you introduce yourselves now, okay. Uh, hello, hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> We're sharing our screen. So um, that's great. We see that there. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello, everybody. We're um, Alexander Bot and Ivan van Paul from Calvin College. We are doing the Palms Tube pro project from Globe, also with our school. Uh, our school is located in Goos, that's uh, in the south in Sweden, the southwest of the Netherlands. It's a small city with 4,000 inhabitants, and our school has 1,200 pupils, and there are five school locations. Okay. 
Uh, now the information about, about projects. Uh, first, our goal to measure the difference of uh, nitrogen between uh, the Oosterschelde and the Westerschelde. Uh, because um, the, uh, we, the, the expectations are uh, that the, the Westerschelde, this, the, the river underneath, is, uh, has more nitrogen because all the boats are um, passing by. And the Oosterschelde is a um, nature reservation, so um, you can't um, uh, farm. You can sail there with sail there great ships. And with uh, big ships, with, uh, with containers and all that, all that stuff. Uh, we um, uh, uh, we hang we up. Uh, we, uh, we track the 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 boats with um uh, the um a, a program is on the internet um uh, so we can see uh is this busy or not so that's the uh, th this is uh one of our tubes right here uh that it near the canal so uh canal so you can um go in here with your boat and there is the there's a big um, harbor of Antwerp. And uh, the Oosterschelde, and at the Oosterschelde, that's the river uh, above, uh, but there we hang the tube on a, yeah, a yeah. we hang the tube low, close to the Oosterschelde, so we can measure the difference very well. And at the Westerschelde, we hang him higher, but close to the water at a high point so no one can touch it or reach it. And that was the end of our presentation. Thank you so much. That's really fascinating and interesting. It's a quite a different situation here. You're measuring it further out from the school. So that'll be really interesting results. Any very quick uh, comments from our our um, our presenters or a panel who'd like to comment on this. Perhaps I'll send it over to um, Peter Falcon first, and then we'll go to um, to the next section of this event. Wonderful a presentation. I remember thinking when you uh, first started, I thought Netherlands, Netherlands, everyone bikes there. It's going to be so different uh, compared to the other schools. And when you went to your slide with all the boats, and I realized very quickly you have a totally different problem uh, than having too many cars, because I know a lot of people bike there. Yeah. Uh, so that was great to see. Great to see that you went and grabbed data from another source <laughs> as well to see uh, where those boats are. Uh, so yes. yeah, continue that. That's very interesting uh, to find out what that data is going to look like once you do receive it. Thanks, Peter. It's really good feedback. And um, thank you guys so much for your presentation. It's not easy to present in a language that is not your first language. Uh, so I just want to say your English was really good and fair play. It's very brave to to give a presentation for a bunch of Irish students. So thank you so much. And I really hope that our Irish students and yourselves as well, I know you quite a few groups at your school will continue to collaborate and compare your results and your findings, um, especially on those behavioral um, changes like how, why do we travel with bike? Why do we travel with car? And can we change those habits? So great work. And I am going to hand back over to Aileen Bright, who's going to take us through the next um, bit of this event. Thank you, Maya. And thank you so much to everyone, to all the students and teachers um, that joined us for this part of the event. And of course, to our panel who great gave great suggestions and comments. So we really appreciate it. Um, now we're going to move on to a very different perspective. We are going to hear from Michael Gray now, and he will speak a little bit about the Maya mission and what their objectives are and what they're doing around air quality. So very different from our local school uh, attempts to measure air quality. We're going to a, a very different aspect. So we're really excited and grateful for Michael for joining us um, at this very, very early uh, part of his day. So thanks, Michael. You're very welcome. All right. <clears throat> well, thank you very much. And uh, I'll make sure I stay on time here. I realize everybody has uh, commitments. Um, let's see. I should be able to share. Uh, let's see if I can share my 
So this is maybe not the best way to go. Let's see. So you can see my screen? Yep, that looks good. Okay, fantastic. Um, so yeah, so my name is Michael Gray, and I'm a, a scientist at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory here in Pasadena, California, where it's still pretty early morning. Um, and I'm very pleased to be presenting to all the GLOBE students and you know mentors online. Um, I'm here to talk about the different perspective from looking down on the Earth. So um, I work with satellites, and I'm going to talk about this upcoming mission called Maya, which is helping us understand air quality and its effect on human health. Um, just to briefly introduce, you know, I work for NASA, and so NASA has many, many satellites up in space, and so this is kind of our what we call the Earth fleet. Um, the upcoming missions are down here. So Maya, if you have really good eyes, you can spot Maya way down here, and we're hoping to launch in a couple of years still, in 2025. Um, but we have many, many other instruments in space. Um, so I work with a number of these guys up here, but we're really excited about Maya coming up in the next couple of years. So I just wanted to kind of provide a little bit of this perspective, like, you know, why do we look at the earth from space? And so this, this is Ireland. So this is where, you know, a lot of you guys are. I didn't quite get the Netherlands in here, um, but this is a, this is what a satellite image of Ireland looks like. I picked a day that wasn't very cloudy. There's some clouds down here. And what you notice is you kind of just see the, the landscape. You don't see the cities, you don't see the roads, uh, but you see, you know, the colors, of the land, and you see how green it is. I mean, we always, at least we hear how green Ireland is. But we can also look at other things about Ireland. So we can look, we can use a different instrument and look at Ireland at night. And so if we look at it at night, we can actually pick out places where people are. So, you know, you, you can recognize, um, you know, the different places. This is Belfast up here. This is you guys are doing Cork. You're down here in Cork. Um, Dublin's the big light right here. And so these lights kind of show us where the people are. And and sometimes even like if you look at outside of Dublin, you can actually even see the little roads on here. So this gives us a different perspective. And, you know, the, the thing to kind of remember is that, you know, there's people, but they're not everywhere. And we kind of want to understand what their impact is on the environment. So if I toggle back and forth, you can kind of see how this works, that, that you know, the places where the cities are, you can't see them very well in the in the picture. But when you look at it at night, you can actually see where the people are. Another thing we look at is we have instruments and we can look at how much air pollution there is. So this is looking at particulates. And this, so this is what you would think of as like kind of like haze or, or smog, something like that, where it's par particles in the atmosphere. So um, there's you can see that in, in the vicinity of Dublin and, and up here in the northern part, there's the colors are more orange. And that means there's more particulates in the atmosphere, whereas over here down in Cork and this time, um, there's less particulates in the atmosphere. And so, you know, we tend to say that the air quality is better where there's less stuff in the atmosphere and it's worse where there's more stuff in the atmosphere. Um, I know you guys are looking at NO2 and so, or nitrogen dioxide. And so this is, we have another satellite. This is actually ESA's satellite. And so we kind of talked about partnerships. So NASA doesn't do this alone. So the European Space Agency has satellites up in space that also can measure different things. And so this happens to be an instrument called TROPOMI, which can measure... NO2 or nitrogen dioxide from space. And so if I toggle back and forth between where the cities are, you can see that you know, there's a lot of NO2 here in the vicinity of Dublin, and there's also a lot of NO2 up here. But what's interesting, and I think this is something for the students and the mentors to think about, is it's not right over the city, but it actually looks like it's probably downwind from the city, right? So um, air pollutants move around. So you can have air pollutants being produced in one place and move to another place. And so that's uh, you know kind of an important thing to understand because you know, when we're trying to improve things, things can be bad here, um, but they're caused by somebody, you know, that's upwind from them. So that's just an important thing to remember, particularly when you're doing these measurements. So, you know, when the depending on which way the wind blows, that's why you're making these measurements of where the wind's going. Um, where the wind blows, it may push that, that nitrogen dioxide somewhere else. And I think you might be surprised at some of the results that you get from your tubes. So... Let me just talk a little bit about Maya. So what we're trying to do with Maya is associate particulate air pollution with its effects on human health. Um, we know that there's particulates in the atmosphere and we can see them from space, but we wanna understand better how those particulates actually affect people. Uh, when we're, we're talking about particulates, we're talking about very, very small particles. And so this picture up in the upper left-hand side shows a human hair. And these little circles here are meant to represent what we call PM10, which are actually large particles. So those are the things that get trapped 
in your just in your nose, and so they make you sneeze. So things like pollen. But the ones that we're interested in, are these little tiny ones, are even smaller than these little blue balls, these little red balls here, and those get deep into your lungs and can cause all kinds of different effects. So um, there's a there's a global study called the Global Burden of Disease and identified particulate matter as the number one environmental risk factor worldwide. So everywhere on the globe, there's people that are affected by just these particulates that can get deep into your lungs. They cause a lot of deaths, over 4 million globally per year. Um, they can affect your, your heart and your lungs. They can affect people that are pregnant. So both the mom and the baby. Um, they can also call it as lung cancer. And there's many, many other things that these, these particulates can do. And so understanding which, which types of these particulates affect people in which ways is really the key thing that we're going after with Maya. So we have a we have a typically what we do for NASA is we build a bunch of instruments and we build an instrument we put it on an airplane and so this is this is kind of just a cool picture of the instrument this is the precursor this little black thing here is the precursor to Maya it's called Air Misby and we work with NASA satellite you know we work with NASA astronauts or almost astronauts and so this is the guy who's the pilot of this plane and this plane flies very very high in the atmosphere and it can take pictures of what's going on on the ground. And it simulates what we're going to see from space in a couple of years when Maya actually goes into space. So just to kind of show you what the, the new thing that we're doing with Maya is, on the left-hand side, this is a, a picture like you would get from a camera. So this is an invisible light. And these white things are clouds and the ground is in the background. And then, then you see this kind of grayish stuff in the middle. And so, you know, it's like, okay, well, we'd like to know, is that cloud? Is that haze? Is that, what is that going on? So we, we make an, a new type of measurement, which is called we use the polarization of light. So it's, it's, we measure polarized light. And you can see the picture looks very different in the polarized light. So if I compare the one on the left and the one on the right, the polarized light shows the clouds, but they're not, they're not white anymore. I can see a lot of reflection. These are lakes here. I can see a lot of reflection from there. But the important thing is that this haze now shows up as very bright. And it turns out that's because it's made up of very small particles. In this case, we know it's smoke from a little fire that we flew over. And so, this measurement in polarized light gives us the ability to distinguish things from clouds, from different types of aerosols, so from smoke. So we can tell the difference between smoke and cloud, which is harder to do on the left-hand side where smoke and cloud both look kind of the same color. This is what the new instrument looks like. This is what Maya actually looks like. So we built it, it, it lives in the lab at, at JPL, which is down the road from where I am. Um, and it's it's ready to go. So the camera here is is this little slot, and we wrap it in gold foils to, to kind of protect it from the environment. Space is very cold, and so we want to kind of keep it warm, so that it'll keep working. And it and the way it works is it has two two gimbals, which are things that rotate it, so it moves it around. And so there's this one, this big one here is kind of the main one, and there's actually another one underneath here that rotates it side to side. And I'll talk about how that works in a second. And in the lower left-hand side, this is a picture taken with a camera. So this is, that we, we set up a picture that has the word Maya on it. And we took a picture using the camera just to show that we can get it to work. And so we're basically done and we're just waiting to get a, a rocket ride into space for our instrument. And that should happen in the next couple of years. So the way Maya works is it flies over a target. Um, so we don't, we don't observe the globe everywhere all the time, but we fly over a target and we take views from different directions as we go over. And that one gimbal makes us, allows us to move in this, in this direction. And then there's the other gimbal, which makes us, we can sweep from side to side so we can see the target more often. So we're not a, we're not a continuous monitoring mission. We actually have targets on the globe. So we measure on the globe and each one of these little dots is a target. And these little blue guys, now, unfortunately, Ireland didn't make the cut because the error quality is actually pretty good, relatively speaking. But we have these different targets all over the globe. So for example, India, um, some places in Italy, you know, the United States, and these blue targets are the, the ones that are kind of the most important, we call them primary targets, and we pick them out. So in the US, we're looking at Los Angeles, where I live, um, Atlanta, and Boston. And the, when the instrument comes over, it does those measurements, and we combine that with other information that we get from different things on the ground. So the, the Maya investigation is really made up of these four different parts. We have the satellite instrument, we have the surface measurement. So that's very similar to what you guys are doing with the tubes. Um, we have different kinds of surface monitors, which I'll talk about in the next slide. We have these models, they're called chemical transport models that predict in a very sophisticated way, 
what we expect the pollution to look like. And then finally, birth deaths and the hospitalization records that tell us when people are getting sick. And we relate all of this information together to try to figure out what effect the air pollution has on people's health. And so this is just, these are just like slightly more sophisticated than the tubes that you guys are using. Um, but we have five, in this case, five different kinds of instruments that measure different things. And so we have something called a Spartan, which measures the type of air pollutants. Actually, the AMOD and the Spartan do the same thing. We have this thing called an athelometer, which measures black carbon, which is a specific kind of thing. We have these low cost sensors, which are called purple airs that can measure just, you know, how polluted is the air. And then finally, we have this ground-based sensor that looks at the sun that tells us about aerosols. So at the end of the day, we have these science questions, you know, looking at different things like um, the effect of uh, air quality on maternal health, which is, which is the health of the mother and also the health of the baby. We also want to know about short-term exposure to, air, to bad air quality and also chronic exposure. So if you keep ex being exposed to bad air quality day after day, how does that affect your health? And so what we hope at the end of this is to better understand how, um, you know, we can, what we can do, just like you guys are talking about, like, these are the things we can do with the school. What can we do as a society? What can we do at a government level to improve air quality? And, you know, we hope that Maya opens the windows to healthier air. Um, and so anyway, so that's the presentation. Here's my contact information if you have any other questions and I'm happy to take questions now. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Michael. That was absolutely fascinating. Um, we'll eagerly await some of those results um, when Maya eventually gets fired off um, on a rocket. Um, I'm wondering, does anyone in the audience have any questions at this point? I'm conscious that you may have to move on uh, during your school day, but if you do have any questions, uh, please go ahead and unmute and ask your question. How did you decide the targets for Maya? That's a great question. So how do we decide the targets that, we're, that we picked? So we need two things. Um, one thing is we need a big population because we want to have, we want to be able to understand the health effects on lots of people. And so you'll notice that these are big cities that we're, we're looking at. So like I said, in the United States, we're looking at Los Angeles, Atlanta, and Boston. We're looking at places like Delhi and Beijing. Um, and uh, like Johannesburg and South Africa. The other thing we need is we need to have a scientist on the ground who's, uh, who specializes in health effects. And so it's called, they're called epidemiologists and they wanna understand the health effects of different things. And so we, we partnered with epidemiologists all around the world to locate places where they could get good health records. And we had a big population so we could actually understand these health effects of, of, um, of these particulates. Okay, thank you. That's a great question. Um, we also have a hand raised. I think it's from Nagel. Is it community college? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there any way uh, people will know when Maya is targeting near them? So that's it. Yeah. So that's another great question. Will they will they know when it's when we're coming over? Um, so we're in what's called a polar orbit. So the way that the satellite works, and and maybe if I go to the previous slide here, when I when I show in the picture. So, so Maya more or less comes over about the same time of day. It comes over in the morning. Um, so 10.30 in the morning is kind of the idea. Or I, I think it's actually, I'm sorry, it's 1.30 in the afternoon we come over. So we, we changed it. But um, so 1.30 in the afternoon, kind of in the middle of the day is when the satellite comes over. But because we're using that chemical transport model, we're using these computer models to predict it. What we're trying to do, what we really want to do is figure out what the overall exposure is during the whole day. So it's not just when the satellite comes over, but the whole day. So we, we understand what the exposure is from, you know, midnight to midnight. And, and so that requires the ground-based measurements, that requires the, the computer model, and it requires the satellite instrument. So, so it's, it's kind of nice to know when the satellite comes over, but it's, um, it's only part of the story. And we want to tell the whole story because we want to understand what, how people are affected throughout the day. So another great question, though. Yeah, that was a brilliant question. We have um, a hand raised from Castle Donovan um, National School. What does Maya stand for? Um, that's a good question. So I think it was already, actually it was not. So it, it stands for the Multi-Angle Imager for Aerosols. 
But it also Maya is actually it's one of the the seven sisters of the Pleiades. So that it's the uh, if you know the the Greek story. So the Pleiades is a star cluster up in the sky, and um, so Maya is one of those seven sisters. And it's it's it, she's actually supposed to represent something about health, and she's supposed to be related to you know human wellness. And so that was the other reason we picked Maya as the name. Thank you. Any more questions for Michael? I don't know if there's questions in the chat. I see the chat going up here and I'm not sure I, it's not. I think um, if I... some of the students uh, have to leave and they're just letting us ah, know. Okay, they're just letting us know they have to take yeah. off. Okay, but well, thank you. Um, and again, I think if you wanna you know, keep, you can write down my, my email address and, and feel free to send me an email and I, I'll try to get back to you and um, or you can, you know, collect questions from, from your schools and, and send it to me as a group. That would be great. That sounds ideal. I have a big thank you to all our presenters today, um, the students, Michael, and indeed to the panel as well for all your suggestions and comments. I'm really, really impressed um, by everything I heard today. And it's so fantastic to see that you can combine your scientific observations with ideas towards solutions. So you're doing your diligent globe work on weather, air quality, and then getting out there and actually measuring the traffic outside your school. Um, I'm thinking about change prior to even getting your results. So I'm super impressed. You're only two weeks into your project, uh, two more weeks of monitoring to go. And then after a short period, you'll have your nitrogen dioxide results. So a big round of applause to you all. Um, continue with the good hard work and we'll have another event most likely in early December uh, when we have our results and we can talk more about solutions then at that time and we can do some more presentations. So well done everyone and thank you so much for joining us today. Well done everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Thanks.